All right, so welcome to my second video here. And this one, we're going to cover how to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. And typically, we'll be dealing with two by two cases, which makes me wonder why I made uh, finding inverses for a three by three. But regardless, it's useful to know um, just for solving other systems in general. But for our cases here, um, two by two is mostly what we'll deal with, especially for non homogeneous systems, which is what we're sort of building up to right now. So let's take a look at this. We have A is equal to this matrix over here. And again, I'm not going to go over too much of the specific theory, but the general idea is we want to find a vector such that we have, when we multiply that vector by our matrix, we get that exact same vector back, but multiplied by a scalar. And geometrically, it basically just means that the vector stays on its span. Um, so yeah, let's go through the steps here. So first, we want to compute the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to zero. And from doing so, we're going to find values of lambda, uh, which would be our eigenvalues. And then using that, we can plug that back into our equation to then solve for the eigenvectors that satisfy this. So doing so, we have the determinant of one minus lambda, negative two minus lambda, four and one. And this is equal to zero. From here, again, we just compute the determinants. Again, compute it however you'd like. But uh, so you have negative two plus two lambda minus lambda plus lambda squared. And then minus four is equal to zero. From here, we can collect our lambda squared. Here we have two lambda minus lambda, so just plus lambda. And then from negative two and negative four, you have negative six. From here, this just becomes a simple factoring kind of situation. So in this case, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative six, add to one. So clearly here you have positive three and negative two. Setting each of these equal to zero and then solving for the value of lambda will give you lambda is equal to negative three or lambda is equal to two. So after finding this, these two are precisely our eigenvalues. And the next step is to find the eigenvectors, which we can do by plugging back into this matrix over here and then solving for um, the x1 and x2, just arbitrary values uh, that would represent the entries of our vector. So the second step, just the eigenvectors, eigenvectors. So in this case, we can just start with either or, it really does not matter. My goal here is uh, mostly to show you some shortcuts or kind of quicker ways to uh, think about and solve uh, for these eigenvectors. So for lambda is equal to negative three. We can again plug it back into our matrix equation here. So we have one minus lambda and negative two minus lambda. So one minus negative three, so one plus three can be four. And then you have four and one. And then you have negative one minus negative three, so negative one. Oh, sorry, negative two minus negative three, so negative two plus three, so another one. And here you're multiplying this by some arbitrary matrix, or sorry, uh, some arbitrary uh, vector x1, x2. And in this case, you know that this must equal to the zero vector. Okay? And we're looking for, again, an eigenvalue, or sorry, an eigenvector that satisfies uh, this relation here. So with this, there are a few different ways you can do it, especially because this is zero, zero, you can simply row reduce and do whatever you want. But in the most case for these scenarios, whenever you're given a question like this, more likely than not, you can quite literally just uh, expand along the first row here to get that four x one has to e or 4x1 plus x2 has to equal to zero, which then you can also conclude that 4x1 is equal to negative x2. And then from here, this is where you want to simply just pick quick and simple values of either x1 or x2 that'll lead to uh, kind of a cleaner, nicer eigenvector. So usually we denote the eigenvectors uh, like this. In this case, we can just pick, uh, yeah, let's say we can pick x1 equal to 1. 
So you can imagine that just leaves you with four is equal to negative x2. So in this case, obviously, x2 is equal to a negative four. And this right here is our eigenvector for this corresponding eigenvalue. Next, we have lambda is equal to two. So for that, we can do that over here. Lambda is equal to two. So same procedure. Again, we need to plug it back into our matrix over here. So again, one minus lambda, one minus two, negative one, negative two minus, uh, sorry, yeah, negative two minus two, so negative four. And then we have four and ones on the other entries. So same idea, you'll notice that these two are effectively scalar multiples of each other, which is why we can simply just uh, solve for one row and we know that's going to give us our correct values. So oops, this is equal to the zero vector. So in this case here, we can again multiply these two across to here and here. So we have that negative x1 is uh, or plus x2. Yeah, I'm already thinking ahead, but usually after you get used to this, you can very quickly do this without having to write these intermediary steps. Uh, they're still useful just to show as well, just so you don't get lost. So this has to equal to zero, and then we know that x1 must equal to x2. So in this case, you can simply pick, uh, again, I'm writing a lot of implication errors, so you don't have to, but we can simply choose either one of them equal to one, and obviously the other one must equal to one because they must be equal. So one, one would be our other eigenvector. And quickly, I'll show you that you can check that both of these solutions here do indeed satisfy the condition or definition of an eigenvector. So if we take our matrix A over here, and I'm just gonna copy it. So I'll just show it for the lambda is equal to two case, just because it's simpler. And then obviously as like an exercise, you can definitely verify it for lambda is equal to negative three as well. So in this case, we can just do uh, matrix vector multiplication. We multiply the one and the one here. I'll expand it out just so it's super clear. So you have one times the first plus one times one minus two. And again, this I won't go into too much detail for because again, many other videos out there that are significantly better at explaining this than I would be able to do here. So here you simply have Again, one plus one, so two. And then you have four plus negative two, so just two. And again, we can now factor out whatever we can. We can factor this out as two times one and one. And as you'll notice, we have exactly that, right? We have our eigenvector back with the corresponding eigenvalue. So with this in mind, we're going to make use of this uh, in the next video where we find the homogeneous solution, which will then lead us to the non-homogeneous system. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching.